Hello everyone, thank you for watching today's video. In today's video, I would like to introduce how to load data from MySQL to SAP HANA database with the ETL tool Panhole. There are four steps for that. First, we need to export the table creation script from MySQL and to do some manual work to translate it into HANA SQL. Because currently, there are no specific components in this ETL tool to help us to generate the table in HANA database. Then I will show how to connect to the database in Panda Hall. And after that, I will demo how to load data from MySQL to SAP HANA database. So first, let's have a look at the MySQL database. have a look at the schemas. In today's video, I would like to use the NTSB. There are 25 tables here. Now um, let's extract the uh, creation script for these 25 tables. I would like to use the MySQL dump. Then the database name. We want we must make sure there's no data will be also exported. Then we save the result into a file, a script file. Create NTSB in demo. Let's have a look at this. So it contains all the screen we need. So after we download the file from server to our local PC, it looks like this. So we need to do some modification here. can use uh, find and replace. So quite useful. And then we need to some change some, some keywords here. Actually we don't don't create a database in a HANA DB but we create a schema. And also, we do not use the word use. Actually, we use the set schema. Also, the if exists keyword is not supported. So the parameter for engine or the for chat set is not, not necessary here. Uh, there are two types of the table in HANA DB. One is the raw stone, like the traditional database, and now it's the cornerstone. The cornerstone has extremely good performance. So in this demo, we create all the tables in the cornerstone way. So very easy to do that. We just add a colon keyword between the create and the table. We have to do some um, adjustment for the type of the each column. So after the modification, the screen would like look like this. So let's open the SAP HANA Studio.
connect to the database. First, we just delete the schema here. Now it's gone. Then we could recreate the schema. So let's first we open our circuit window. And copy all the script here. So we refresh the catalog. Now, the so NTSB demo has been recreated. So we, let's have a look at the tables. All the tables have been created in the cornerstone way. So uh, now let's uh, load it from MySQL and choose the Spana database with the two open hold data creation. Let's create a job. Then we can create the database connections. First, let's create the connection for my circuit. We can select the connect type. We put the host name. So address database name is the username password. Then we have a test. It's okay, good. Now let's create a connection for the other database. can look at the connection type list, you will find that there's no specific connection type for another database, which means we have to create in a very generic way a generic database. And uh, we can see the customer connection tree is here. The DBC keyword, SAP, the server's address, the portal, the port. And uh, we have added a parameter here is the current schema, which will uh, tell the system which schema uh, we will open. The driver class name, uh, here we use uh, SAP, DBC driver. The name. We test. The result is OK. And here is a very useful tool. We'll save a lot of work here. Here and copy tables. So we first need to choose the source, source database, MySQL, and the target database. HANA DB. Then we choose the table uh, we want to uh, load. Uh, to save the time, I just uh, pick the four tables here. There's no much 
okay here we can see what are the times for this demo Okay, then dictionary a dictionary to see what all the files the system will generate a lot of entries for you automatically but we also have to do some modification on this So each table, the system will create two entries. One is for the circuit execution. He believes that you need to modify the data table, but we think it's not necessary. Another is the transformation, which will load, will do the data loading. You can see from when read from and write to. So it is not necessary uh, to use the circuit execution entry so we all delete it and then we also try to run the entries in parallel way so we can do like this you can connect the, the entries uh, press shift and uh, uh, right click your mouse make sure uh, that the job was written in the parallel way we right click on the start entry and uh, click the launch next entries in parallel there's a warning that uh, uh, there is a concurrency checking here we see we understand then we could run this job. Local execution because there's no remote server here currently, and then we also can get the performance matrix. Click launch. You can see that the data loading. So let's have a look at the transformation. You can see all the stem metrics here. Because currently I use a VPN to connect it to the network, so the speed is not very good. So, this has been all done. So let's have a look at the uh, date. Studio. We reopen the kill window and uh, try to use the streamer as a demo. Like they drop an object to this. Now, oh, here they are. Thank you for watching today's video.